So in the vein of differential equations uh, being models for things in the real world, uh, one of the most important skills you can develop is to be able to take a verbal description of change, right? Take, take something that's going on in the real world and translate that into a differential equation and also go the other direction, interpret a differential equation just by looking at it to see what it's saying uh, about the system that it describes. Uh, but I think we're going to focus on the first part, which is to translate descriptions of change into differential equations. Uh, and we're just going to do some examples to get you rolling. This is an example that will be familiar to people who have taken uh, chemistry or maybe even physics. The rate of decay of a radioactive substance is proportional to the amount of substance remaining. How are we going to translate that into a differential equation? Well, the first step is always just identify your variables. So let's let n represent the amount of the radioactive substance, and that depends on time, which we'll, uh, which we'll symbolize by t. So n is the dependent variable, t, sorry, n uh, is the dependent variable, and t, which is time, is the independent variable. And so now we've got to um, we got to write down the rule, the differential equation rule that describes the situation. And since we see the phrase the rate, let's just start by writing down an expression for the rate. Right? If we write down the NDT, the mathematical meaning of that is the rate of change of the amount of radioactive substance. And then we got to write equals, and then we have to use the information to um, use the information we're given to fill in the right-hand side of this equation. And we see the word decay. So first, uh, we know that n should be decreasing. If n is decreasing, then dn dt from calculus should be negative. Since we want decay to happen, so I'm going to put a negative sign here. That's the first thing. And it says it's proportional to the amount of substance remaining. Well, proportionality just means a constant times. So I'm going to write a constant times the amount of stuff that's remaining, which is just n. So we get the rule dn dt equals minus kn. Um, and here we're going to assume that k is a positive constant, so that minus kn is a negative quantity, which means dn dt is negative. So the amount of uh, radioactive substance will be decreasing. It'll be decaying as prescribed by the, by the verbal description. Okay, so a potato's been cooking for some amount of time, and it's in a heated oven, and you take it out of the oven, and the temperature in the kitchen is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The rate at which the potato cools is proportional to the difference between the room temperature and the potato's temperature. We want to describe this with a differential equation. Once again, we've got to de define our variables. Capital T represents temperature, and little t represent time. Capital T is the dependent variable. Little t is the independent variable. And we got to write down a rule for the rate of change. So I'm going to write dt, d capital T, d little t, that is, is equal to. So, so far we've written the rate of change is. And we know it's got to be cooling down at a rate proportional to the difference between the room temperature and the potato's temperature. Okay, so let's let's try to suss that out. So first we saw the word proportional. Okay, so I'm going to write k here, k times. That's what proportional means. And then we have the difference between the room temperature and the potato's temperature. Well, the room temperature is 65, and the potato's temperature is t. So I'm going to write k times 65 minus t. And let's just check that this makes sense and that it's actually going to cool, right? So we assume that the potato starts out hotter than 65. Maybe it starts out at, you know, 300 degrees or something. Who knows? Um, so you can think of plugging in a big number like 300 for T. 65 minus 300, well, that would be negative. And we want dt, d little t, to be negative because the potato is supposed to cool. So if the 65 minus T is negative, that means the K should be positive here. K greater than zero the way we've written it. Okay, final example. A particle moves along the x-axis, its position from the origin at time t given by x of t. So here our dependent and independent variables have already been defined for us. A single force acts on the particle, and the force is proportional to, but opposite, the object's displacement. So think of that, like you have the number line here, 
and you know here's zero. And if your position of the particle is over here at x, there's a force that's dragging it back this way. And the further you get to the right, the harder that force acts. Okay. And similarly, if you were over here, if you were way over here, a force would be acting really hard, uh, pushing it back to the right. And we have to write down a differential equation that describes this. And the first thing to remember um, is Newton's law, um, which is just force equals mass times acceleration. That's the first thing, F equals MA, okay? But we're supposed to write a differential equation for the position X. So the first thing we have to do is write acceleration in terms of position. So you might remember the following. If X is position, the time derivative of position, dx dt, is velocity, and the time derivative of that, which is uh, d squared X dt squared, is acceleration. Okay, so let's replace that in our f equals ma statement. Uh, I'm going to actually divide each side by m and write a equals f over m, right? Except a we're going to replace with d squared x dt squared. Like so. Okay, and now we have to actually use our information about what the force is. And we're told that the force is proportional to, but opposite the object's displacement. So proportional to the displacement would mean kx. Opposite to means minus kx, where k is a positive constant, right? So we're gonna have something like the force is minus kx. So putting that all together, we get d squared x dt squared equals one over m times minus kx. And I'm just going to define k over m to be a new constant. So we can write something like d squared x dt squared equals minus cx, where c is now defined as k over m. And by the way, this is, you don't have to be a physicist, this is just a side comment, um, that this is the situation uh, that sometimes happens with a simple spring. So this is actually known as Hooke's law when you study springs in physics.